Yeah, I mean, look, tech disruption, I think, is, disruption. is the topic of the day for most organizations. And, and look, I think one of the quotes we use a lot in DHL is, look, if we don't disrupt ourselves, somebody else is going to disrupt us. You know, So we really have to look at a very traditional, very successful business model and ask ourselves some questions around, you know, are we relevant for the next 5, 10, 20 years? So I think e-commerce is a great example of Deutsche Post DHL, DP DHL starting to transition into the digital arena. Yeah, so uh, this the e-commerce e division was born in 2014. It's clearly focused at becoming a leader in e-commerce related logistics activities. And uh, as I've experienced over the last two or three years, and most people now know, this is not a physical asset discussion. It's more of a technology discussion. How do you use technology to predict what people will buy? How do you use technology to orchestrate careers? How do you use technology to take the van off the road and replace it with robotics or whatever it may be, autonomous vehicles? So, uh, you know, today, right in the eye of the storm, and I'm sure it's going to be pretty busy for the next few years. Okay, look, I, so today is my 52nd birthday, so uh, I can't really classify myself as a millennial, but I'm trying. I think my shoes are pretty millennial, if I'm honest. But, um, uh, and if I didn't wear socks with them, I definitely would be a millennial. But um, I, think, I think, again, you know, I think what's going to make successful businesses going forward is, you know, even if you're you know, a really great company, very well established like DPDHL, that's been around for a long time, hundreds of years, yeah, we can still be very relevant for the millennials of tomorrow. So I think, number one, you've got to constantly be challenging, constantly be changing, constantly be looking to how can you be very relevant going forward, that's number one. Number two, you need to employ the skill sets that look at the business very differently, perhaps to how I looked at it over the last 10, 20 years. So, you know, in the e-commerce division, for example, we hire a lot of very young people, a lot of millennials who clearly operate and see things differently to how, perhaps how we do, yeah? So I think that's number two. Number three is then very clearly identifying what do you want to play? Where do you want to play going forward? And, you know, again, traditionally, from an e-commerce perspective, you think person in the van, but that's not what it's going to be over the next two to five years. You've got to look at the upstream as well as the downstream and look at how technology will play and, and make it very, very relevant for how the millennials and tomorrow's buyers are going to want to operate with people like us. They don't want to wait at home between eight and six in the evening for a delivery. That's not how millennials want to operate. It's not how tomorrow's you know, workers are going to operate. It's not how my children are going to operate when they reach the age of 18 and 20. So to push the same product through the same pipe is no longer applicable. You have to look for new disruptive ways to deliver. Challenge, challenge everything. I mean, I think, and I think this is true regardless of age group, regardless of company. You know, it's how I live my life with DHL for the last 33 years. Is you know, always question, question why we do something, question why I'm standing here, question why we're on stage with microphones, question is there a better way to do it? Look at it from a consumer perspective, and you'll start challenging and asking questions that need to be answered. That's number one. Number two, I still think, regardless of the different styles and different approaches you have to adopt going forward, so much more now on mobile device than on PC and desktop, but you still it's still about, if you're going to be a leader, a good leader or a great leader, in my humble opinion, it's that ability to create shining eyes with whoever you touch, you know, so it doesn't matter what day, time of the day it is, doesn't matter what day of the week it is, when you have that interaction with an employee, whether it be a courier, whether it be a customer service agent, a salesperson or a director or the CEO for DPDHL, you have an opportunity to make their day better or worse. And that's true 10 years ago, and it's true for the next 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 years going forward. Great leaders have the ability to orchestrate huge amounts of energy, huge amounts of passion, and huge amounts of motivation. So, you know, I think it's relevant for the last 10 years, and I think it's hugely relevant for the next 10, 20, 50, or 100. You know, my advice to any uh, aspiring leader is you have an opportunity every single time you meet whoever it is, whatever level, to make their day better or make it worse. So my advice is obviously try and make it better. But the last point I would make is, um, I think millennials have a different requirement of an organization. If you want to be employer of choice, which clearly DHL is, if you want to be the employer of choice, you have to recognize that the way of operating today is different to the 1980s, to the 1990s, to the, to the noughties. You know, it's different, yeah? And I think one of the big changes we've seen is that uh, millennials and the younger generation coming into our environment, they want to know purpose. So it's not just about, oh, we deliver packages. What's your purpose? What does DPDHL stand for? What is its relevance? 
relevance to the country, to the earth, to the planet? You know, what is its relevance? So I think purpose is really important, working out why we do what we do and what impact that has on the environment and what impact that has on the people that you work with. So think global, act local, very, very relevant, very, very true. I think workspace also very very true you've got to think about how you create a great workspace you know offices don't really work anymore places like this look pretty good um, so very open and engaging environments and make it fun you know make it fun people don't want to come to work if you had a choice if you were a billionaire you wouldn't be standing here yeah you'd probably be at uh, f1 or golf or football or rugby whatever it is yeah so people don't necessarily want to come to the office yeah so if they're going to come in and work for dhl and we want them to and want to be employer choice make it fun make it as fun as you possibly can so that at least they go home at night when they speak to their other half or their friends and they say hey how was today they go you know it was good fun you know so that's it well my wife would question i don't have much power but um <laughs> I, I look i think it's I think I, i've tried to live my life and i started with dhl 33 years ago as a customer service agent, and I've gone and moved through the ranks to CEO of DHL Commerce today, and I'm very proud of that. But I, three sort of things I've tried to hold on to, three values. One is, don't fundamentally change who you are. You know, when I started with a, you probably don't remember the band, there was a band called Bross back in the 80s, and I had a haircut, was around here, very shaved around here. I, you know, people take me for who I am, and I'm very proud of who I am. So I, I think you should try not to overly engineer who you are. Your values and your culture and you know, all those good things your parents taught you are what makes you different and what makes you great. So um, I hold on to what I believe is right, uh, number one. Number two, when I talk to my staff, you know, my employees, um, I remember what it was like on the other side of the coin. I remember when I worked as a courier, when I worked as a customer service agent, I remember how I wanted to be spoken to by a leader, how I wanted the leader to behave. And so I try to behave the same way because regardless of title, you're still Charles Brewer, the ex-customer service agent or the ex-courier. So why should you try and be something fundamentally different to what you were then? Absolutely. And the third thing is, I firmly believe it's less about qualification and much more about application. So I don't really care what university somebody went to, what degree they came out with, whether they have 10 of them, they're a doctor or whatever else. What I care about and what DHL cares about is, do you love working for us? Do you apply yourself in the right way and do we deliver great results? And if you do that, I think you can move through any organization pretty fast. I'm a little bit odd. So I have weird eureka moments at weird times of the day in weird places and probably best I don't share those with you because <laughs> the imagery would be rather off-putting. But um, yeah, I think, um, you know, again, despite the fact we're a 500,000 employee organization operating in more than 220 countries worldwide, we're still entrepreneurs. We're still a startup. I mean, DHL started with three people, three people, the D, Dalsey, H, Hillbloom, L, Lynn, meeting in a coffee shop in San Francisco in 1969. They were a startup. Today, we're a 500,000 person startup, but we're still a startup. So we hugely encourage that everyone from the CEO of the organization right down to the most junior person operates in that fashion, operates in a way that says, you know, how can we do it differently? Operates in a way that says, how do we innovate and create innovative solutions in the spaces that we play? And I think back to your first question around disruption and digitalization disruption, that intense intent to operate more like a digital startup, to operate more like a disruptor has accelerated over the last nine, 12 months. And now we create the formats to populate great innovative ideas, create bubble up from the bottom up. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Shark Tank uh, or the one in the UK, which is a very similar name. Um, you know, we now run those sessions within DHL where people can come and present ideas to investors and the investors being DHL on what would be good ideas for tomorrow's logistics environment and out of you know born out of those sort of sessions comes things like the electric scooters we have or the uh, street scooter we developed in Germany which is an electric vehicle built for the e-commerce and post environment out of that comes things like delivered to the back of a trunk using smart uh, locks out of that comes things like augmented reality glasses that allows you to pick and pack uh, much more efficiently so we have a huge innovation team we have three global innovation centers, one of which is here in Singapore, and they spend their lives working out how can we innovate to be better for our employees, better for our customers, and better for our investors. So a lot of time spent in that arena. Great question. That's a great question, Alicia. So um, 
I think it leads a little bit back to what we were just talking about, how do you operate as a leader. So uh, when I first go in the office in the morning, uh, if I'm in Singapore and I travel a lot, um, so somebody asked me recently, where am I based? I said, I'm in a 777, you know, so, uh, uh, but I travel an awful lot. But if I'm in Singapore and I go to where my office is, uh, here on Beach Road. The first thing I do is I make fun of Monica, who's standing behind you, and we have a bit of fun. And uh, yeah, I walk around, say hello to people, chat, uh, ask them how their day's been, what do they do, what was yesterday, how was their weekend? So I think, again, many people I see as leaders, the first thing they do is go to their PC and look at emails. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, we're a people business and we're only as good as how well our people operate. So the first thing I do is focus on my employees. So phone calls, talking to, whatever it may be, try and connect with um, the DHL e-commerce team around the world and in Singapore. Second thing is customers. So we try and think about uh, what are we doing today that's going to make our customers' lives better? Um, how do we make it simpler, deliver more excellence? So what can we do that's going to improve our customers' lives? Could be new country entry, could be new programs, could be new product solutions, could be many things, but we focus on how do we make our customers' lives that much better. And then thirdly, we start to look at the financials. So how is, uh, how is the organization doing financially? And then the fourth element is, as I mentioned earlier on, is what can we do that provides purpose? What can we do that gives back? What do we do around corporate social responsibility? So how do we position DHL as a good corporate citizen? And, and you know, we really believe that we have a responsibility far greater than connecting 220 countries and connecting hundreds of thousands of SMEs and thousands, tens of thousands of MNCs. We have a responsibility to make sure this planet moves forward. Okay, so I've been involved in logistics for 33 years old, yeah, and uh, I love it. I love logistics. It's fantastic. It's, it's, it's exciting. I get to deal with lots of different countries every single day, lots of different people every single day, lots of different customers every single day, and all of that focused around sort of trade development and growing organizers. There's nothing better than seeing a small company of two people become 10 people, becoming 20 people, and, that, and we help to do that, yeah? So that's really rewarding, yeah? So I love logistics. But, but, the sexiest thing on this planet, apart from me, the sexiest thing on this planet in the logistics space is e-commerce. It's a phenomenon that we won't see again, probably in my lifetime, I probably won't see it again. So growing at 27% cross-border, uh, the cross-border sector growing at 27% year on year, B2C domestic growing at 9, 10, 11%. Very few other industries have that opportunity, yeah? And remember that we are right at the start of the S-curve. We're right around the beginning of this, this huge thing, yeah? So all that volume you see being ordered, I'm sure you order, by the way, all, that, all those things you see being ordered, all those things you see being shipped, and all those things you see being delivered, is only 9% of sales. So globally, only 9% of what's sold in shops is ordered online. So the, the, the opportunity, the upside is enormous, massive. And that's why I love it. It's, it's fantastic.